I want to share with you a project that we've been doing for the past decade or so. But before I begin, I need to acknowledge my co-authors, uh, Dr. John Apapanio and Wendy Shelsky of the Natural History Survey, and Trent Thomas of the Department of Natural Resources. So the red spotted sunfish, historically in the fish literature, uh, was listed as a subspecies under Lacoma spontatus, which is a spotted sunfish. It was elevated to full species status in 1992 by Noel Warren Jr. The red spotted sunfish occurs down south, mainly Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, but the northern edge of the range occurs in Illinois. Specifically, um, in the 1979 fish book by Smith, um, he had populations listed at the Rupine Hills, which is along the Mississippi Bluffs, uh, the, near where the Ohio and Wabash meet, in addition to backwater lakes of the Illinois River Basin, Havana, Beardstown, Pew, and much of the vicinity. It was never overly abundant in Illinois, but during the last decade or so, it seems to have decreased even further. It was listed as state threatened in 1989. Smith in his uh, book lists a variety of reasons for the decline of species. The first one is drainage of swamps and bottom of lakes. The second is general deterioration of water quality. Water quality. And lastly, the arrival of grass carp and common carp. These are factors known to either reduce or eliminate aquatic vegetation. And the fish is, is, that's one of the key components for the fish, is the needs of aquatic vegetation. So we set out a project uh, objective of determining the current status of the species. We wanted to know whether the species is still threatened, perhaps it is in danger, or perhaps it's recovering on its own and should be uh, unlisted. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we wanted to restore, restore viable populations across the species range. So we set out, we started sampling historical records, and these records are based upon uh, museum voucher specimens, fish literature. We also sampled promising locations. And last, we sampled neighboring states where the fish occurred in Indiana, Missouri, Kentucky. So our data suggested that there's two populations, one down south in Salem County and the other in central Illinois, um, near the lower Salem, around Beardstown. As a result, we nominated the fish for state endangered, which means it's almost extirpated. So I need to take a step aside and talk about the central Illinois population. Here's a map of Mason County, um, kind of lower segment where we sampled. We sampled high and low and everywhere in between. These are all historical fish records. We sampled this Wolf Lake in the lower left-hand corner, the area where the X's are. It's a historical spot. We sampled it three or four times, failed to find the fish. A citizen scientist went fishing in this little ag ditch and found numerous red spotted sunfish. He told us about it. We went out, and this is probably the best spot in the state in that little quarter section. So we took all the pin clips for the genetics. We ran them. We got a question of how closely related are these two populations are from one another. Wendy and John conducted their magic, and what they uh, found were that the central Illinois population is a little bit genetically distinct from the other populations. And this comes into play when working with endangered species, specifically this American Fisheries Society Policy Statement Number 19. It's sort of a cookbook method, if you will, for working with endangered fish. It lists things such as selecting introduction sites. You want to put them in protected lands. You don't want to just put them wherever. You want to choose from the appropriate brood stock. You want to mix genetics. And lastly, you want to perform close introduction activities. You don't want to just spread the fish and call it good. So what we did was went to Fish Creek. Um, and started collecting adults. We brought these adults back to Champaign, the Natural History Survey Research Ponds, with, with, which are just south of town. Um, and we set an objective of, of bringing back 50 breeding pairs over three to five years. And at, we, when we went to Fish Creek and brought them back, we put them in these little one, one hectare ponds um, that have a lot of vegetation. The first year we had about 24 uh, animals that produced about 4,500 juveniles. The second year, 2,800 juveniles. The third year, 1,200 juveniles. We started to see this downward trend in number of adults. We got freaked out, we thought maybe it was us. But we started to look at the data a little bit further. We saw an increase in grass carp. That's a species known to destroy the habitat. And also, the last three years, the stream has been hammered by drought. It has essentially dried up on numerous occasions. So we felt a little bit better about ourselves. Um, the babies that were made, we have stocked and spread throughout. Uh, the first generation of babies, we put in an Imoqua Nature Preserve, which is a Nature Conservancy owned property. And we also put 175 at Allerton at Mansion Pond, right in the park. Then we return to the rootstock at Fish Creek. Here's some data from the babies. The babies are doing exceptionally well in most locations. You see this nice upward trend, which means babies are making babies. When you're working with endangered species, that's what you want to see. So because of this, we're further spreading out the second generation of babies to additional lakes in Emma Pond Nature Preserve, in addition to Hennepin and Hopper, which is kind of just that northern, extreme northern limit of our fishes range. And then our plans are maybe elsewhere. So this has been an extremely uh, fun and challenging project. Uh, we were fortunate enough to be published in the uh, Natural History Survey's uh, winter reports. This is available online if you're interested in reading about it. If 
you have any further questions about it, feel free to get me a shout. I'd be happy to address any questions, and I want to be a great time.